The Legno Air Show 2021 was a show of firsts. The first official full flying display by a Polish Air Force C-130 and the first international military participation in the event's history with an appearance by the Swiss Air Force's Super Puma solo display. But this modest event held at a grass airstrip is about so much more than the military. Classic jets, paramotors, gliders, formation teams and warbirds were all present in the flying display with another highlight being a series of spectacular performances by the Flying Bulls. And the usual pyrotechnic displays were rounded out by the Aerosparks display team in even more spectacular style than usual. This is our pick of the action. Hello to you wherever you are watching from and welcome for the second time to Antidotum Airshow Lesno. It was less than a year ago since we were last here at this modestly sized airshow but we make no apologies for returning so soon because this, quite possibly, is our favourite airshow anywhere. Over the next 45 minutes or so we'll attempt to give you a little taste of what it was like to be there using both our cameras on the ground and our filming drones high in the sky, as well as for the first time since our second series taking you on board many of the display aircraft. And first up is the aircraft on the screen now, the L-29 Delphine. This aircraft comes from the Slovak company L-29.SK based in Zlina and it's one of only two flying L-29s in that country. This is of course a Czechoslovakian designed aircraft, the first jet aircraft to be designed and built in Czechoslovakia. It was designed in response to a request for a common jet training aircraft for use across the whole of the Eastern Bloc, but in the end it was sold much more broadly than that, with somewhere in the region of 25 military operators, as diverse as Romania, Ghana, Indonesia and the Soviet Union, the latter of which operated over 2,000 of them. Now here's a manoeuvre we don't usually see from a jet aircraft, a stall turn. It's not nearly as compact as a stall turn performed by a purpose-built aerobatic aircraft, but still mightily impressive and certainly the first time I've seen it performed by a solely jet-powered aeroplane. more astute among you will have noticed that there is no crowd visible in these cockpit shots and that's because this particular performance was actually recorded during the Thursday practice sessions but the rest of the video was filmed during the main public event. Now, the L-29 landing on, and in doing so, becoming the first jet ever to operate from the grass airfield here at Lesno.
The next act will be very familiar to Legno regulars, a pair of Urcoops, wonderful 1930s two-seat touring aircraft from the USA. It was billed as the aircraft that anybody could fly, the safest private plane in the sky. And it was indeed the very first aircraft said to be incapable of spinning. It was hugely popular. In 1946, 34 Urcoops were rolling off the production line every day. Even though regular production ended in the 1940s, there are still around 2,000 surviving today, and that accounts for over a third of the original production run. First of three appearances now from the Flying Bulls Warbird collection from Hangar 7 in Salzburg. They performed in several combinations throughout the day, and Antidotum Airshow Lesno was a significant show for them because it saw the debut of their newly acquired P-51D Mustang Nookie Bookie. In the 1960s and 70s, this very Mustang was owned by Bob Hoover, that great legend of the North American airshow circuit. After that, she found a home in France, and the Flying Bulls took delivery of her in April 2021. She wears the colours of Nookie Bookie 4, a P-51K flown by Major Leonard Kit Carson, a US Army Air Force pilot who scored some 18 and a half air-to-air -air kills in the latter stages of the Second World War. Today it flies alongside the collection's P-38, the only P-38 outside of North America that is still in airworthy condition, representing this legendary and enormously capable high-altitude fighter bomber. This one too has had an illustrious civilian career, being used as an air racer in the USA and having recorded a top speed of 440 miles per hour in 1947. And that makes it officially the fastest P-38 in the world. So the Mustang into land from our runway threshold vantage point. We'll have more from the Flying Bulls very soon, but for now, a different kind of formation performance comes to us from one of the best known names on the Polish airshow circuit, Zelazny. They start as ever with that brilliant opposition takeoff, which I love so much. Number two now performs a half Cuban to come back around and join up with the leader. The aircraft is the Zlin 50, another machine of Czechoslovakian design. It first flew in 1975, and during the late 70s and the 1980s, it was, to the world of competition aerobatics, what the Extra 330 is today. Somewhat unusually, it has two ailerons on each wing, which move independently of each other, and together they make up almost all of the trailing edge. It also has a mix of automatic and adjustable trim tabs, and all of those control surfaces together mean it has quite exceptional roll performance. Exceptional not just in roll rate, which is about 360 degrees per second, but also in the precision and speed of its roll starts and stops. Although by the late 80s, 
It was being superseded by the new generation of aerobatic aircraft, the Cat 232 and the Sukhoi Su-26, for example. The Zlin 50 still has three World Aerobatic Championship titles to its name, and all of those were in the hands of Czechoslovakian pilots. Zelazny has used the Zlin 50 ever since it was formed in 1999 and they now operate four of the type. Sadly, just a two-ship display from them in Lezno. It was due to be a trio, as with last year, but the third aircraft was late to arrive. The team is famous for its low-flying exploits and for their final pass we get an excellent look at that with this low fly past. Time for the second of the three big Flying Bulls Warbird slots and this time we see the other two aircraft they brought to Lezno. First into the air, the T-28B Trojan. followed by the B-25 Mitchell. We're getting a great look here at the T-28's excellent custom designed smoke system which was implemented when the aircraft was returned to flight following an eight year restoration project that ended in 2016. It may just be a trainer but it packs an awful lot of punch with a 1,400 horsepower radial engine. That puts it only 200 horsepower short of the twin engine P-38 that we saw earlier. The B-25 now comes into land, one of just two airworthy examples in Europe, clearing the way for the T-28 solo display. Of course, we can't fail to mention that this was the Trojans' last ever aerial performance because it was tragically involved in a fatal accident in the Czech Republic shortly after its visit to Lezno. That accident not only destroyed the aircraft, but also killed the two occupants, including Rainer Steinberger, the very pilot who is performing so beautifully here. And for the next few minutes, I shall let his flying do the talking.
Coming up next, we have something almost unprecedented at a show which had previously attracted almost no military participation at all. One of the Polish Air Force's two display teams, Aerobatic Team Orlik. Unfortunately, this is not Team Orlik quite as we're used to seeing them. They more famously flew with seven, eight, or even nine aircraft just a few short years ago, but had to cut right back in recent seasons as the Polish Air Force's Peter Dell 130 fleet underwent upgrade works. And we've caught them at a bit of an awkward time because the team are in the process of building back up to a six ship, which they plan to debut in August. And Lezno came along in the middle of the training program for that. So not only have we got half the team in terms of numbers, we've also got pretty much half a display because this particular trio doesn't include the soloist and therefore the show routine doesn't include any of the more complex dynamic manoeuvres that we're used to seeing from them. I'd love to be enlightened to the very noticeable squeaking sound that seems to emanate from the Pizzadel 130. It's something I've noticed before, but it's particularly obvious here. I don't think it's the engine, because the Orlik uses the extremely popular Pratt & Whitney PT-6, which is the same sort of engine used in the King Air, the Twin Otter, the Cessna Caravan, and virtually every other military turbo trainer on the market. The KT-1, the PC-7, the PC-9, the PC-21, the Texan II, the Takano, and the Hercus among them. The rest of the design is indigenous to Poland, however. It was introduced in 1994, but sadly didn't receive any export customers, so the production run stands at only 50. time for the next contribution from the Flying Bulls collection in Salzburg and I was about to say it's not one of their warbirds this time but I suppose technically it is because the Bolko Bo 105 has served and continues to serve with a number of military operators 13 as of 2021 but numerous other air arms have already retired the type. It's also popular on the civilian market, perhaps most famously with Red Bull, who use it as an aerial camera platform and also as a display aircraft in its own right, with examples based on both sides of the Atlantic. And if you're going to choose one helicopter to use as an airshow machine, then this is very obviously the right one. It was the first aerobatic helicopter in the world, and to this day, it is the most aerobatic helicopter ever built, even though it has been over half a century since its first flight. This manoeuvrability is made possible through its pioneering hingeless rotor system, with each of its four flexible composite rotor blades bolted into a solid titanium rotor head. That makes the rotor system durable enough to withstand up to 3.6 positive G and 1 negative G, which in turn makes these aerobatic manoeuvres possible. Although a substantial part of the 2021 lineup was new to the Lesno audience, there was a handful of returning items, and this is one of them, the SB Lim 2. Last year, I described this aircraft as Poland's only airworthy limb, but I'm happy to report that is no longer true. The same organization behind the operation of this aircraft completed the restoration of a second example earlier this year. 
and in fact they had been due to display both of them as a two-ship display both at Lezhno and at Airshow Margenin the previous weekend. Sadly, a last-minute curveball from the Civil Aviation Authority of Poland precluded that, and in fact neither of the two aircraft were able to participate in Airshow Margenin, but at Lezhno we did at least get a solo. A number of single-seaters were actually built in Poland, known as the Lim-1 and the Lim-2. This is an SB Lim-2, which is a two-seat training version of the Lim-2. They started life as single-seat MiG-15s, but were modified into two-seaters in Poland, effectively the same as the MiG-15 UTI. The organization's other aircraft is a LIM-2, which is effectively a MiG-15 BIS. Those were actually built in Poland, and we very much hope to see it in the flesh at Lezhno next year. Not quite a flying display participant, but we do have to take a quick look at the departure of this Polish Air Force Milne 8, one of a couple of transport helicopters that dropped into the show throughout the weekend, in this case I believe depositing a senior member of the Polish Armed Forces. but back to the flying proper, and it's time for a complete change of pace with two L-13 Blanik gliders of Red Bull Team Blanik's. Once again, we get to enjoy some wonderful onboard views as the two gliders begin their display at sunset. And for their first figure, they split apart to draw a heart in the sky with their pyrotechnic wingtip smoke. We do seem to be taking a bit of a canter through the aviation history of Czechoslovakia because this is yet another design that hails from that country. You can tell just from looking at it that it isn't exactly modern. It made its first flight back in 1956, but it remains popular today, not least on the airshow circuit where it's flown by a couple of glider formation teams. And until relatively recently, it was also used for basic training by the United States Air Force Academy, one of eight military operators. There is no better time to see Team Blanix than at sunset. It had been a hot and extremely busy day, but as the sun starts to slip below the horizon and as the temperature begins to fall, this is a lovely way to slow down the pace and to relax the crowd ahead of the nighttime aerial artistry that is to come. There is nothing more serene than seeing these two gliders passing silently above you in close formation 
against a sky such as this. And that sky is about to get even more spectacular still. A perfect formation landing, not easy when both aircraft are completely unpowered, of course. But we go now from a display that is calming and quiet to a succession of acts that are anything but. As Red Bull's contribution reaches a crescendo both metaphorically and literally. Once the four warbirds are up in the air, we turn to the Zivco Edge 540 of the acclaimed Polish aerobatic pilot Luke Ciepiela, who now brings us a little bit of the Red Bull air race to Lesno with his hot air balloon slalom. Luke raced in the Red Bull Air Race Challenger class from 2014 up until the series ended in 2019. With four race wins to his name, he's now very much hoping to be involved in the Aero GT series of the Red Bull Air Race's successor competition, World Championship Air Race, which is due to start in 2022. And indeed, you can read all about that in my exclusive interview with World Champs Air Race's new series director over on the This Is Flight website. But as the conditions get ever more stunning and the warbirds prepare to arrive, I think it's time for me to let you enjoy the sights and sounds of this most glorious of displays unimpeded. Because what you're about to see is something very special indeed. formation gradually reduces in size as each element peels away to perform manoeuvres either individually or in ever smaller groups. And if there has ever been an argument for hosting more air shows in the evening rather than the early afternoon, then this, ladies and gentlemen, is it.
if that didn't move you, then perhaps the next act will, because running in now is the Polish Air Force F-16C Tiger demonstration team. It's hard to make out in these lighting conditions, but you might just about be able to see the distinctive two-tone grey camouflage used by the Polish Air Force, and rather easier to spot those conformal fuel tanks above each of the wing routes and the afterburner from that Pratt & Whitney F-110 engine standing out brilliantly against the darkening sky. Coming up next, a four-point roll, then into a steep climb to set up for a split S reversal back onto the show line for a knife edge pass. Tiger demo team was formed in 2016, trained by the Hellenic Air Force Zeus demo team, which was in turn trained by the US Air Force Viper demo team. So you can see that North American style of display has been carried forward into the Polish display routine. Lots of straight passes down the show line with a maneuver in the middle and a split S or half Cuban to turn around and repeat, repeat, repeat. It's certainly not the most dynamic of fast jet solos on the circuit, but the good news is that there has been a marked improvement since its first season five years ago. Coming in at low speed now, showing off the F-16's impressive high alpha performance, which is certainly not bad compared to other Western fourth generation fighters. It's limited to 29 degrees of alpha. That is, the attitude of the aircraft can differ by no more than 29 degrees from its direction of travel. And this maneuver probably isn't far off that. Powering out of that slow pass, utilising the almost 30,000 pounds of thrust that the F-16C has on tap, giving it a thrust-to-weight ratio of greater than 1 to 1. Poland currently operates 35 F-16Cs and 12 F-16Ds, both of which are the Block 52 variant. They fly alongside a smaller fleet of MiG-29s and Su-22s, but those two aircraft types are to be phased out and replaced by the F-35A starting in 2024. Tiger Demo Team is the only military participant to have displayed at the Lezhno Air Show in the past. And this was the first time it had performed its full demonstration profile at Lezhno. And we have another hugely significant first coming up next in the form of the show's first ever international military contribution. It is a Swiss Air Force Super Puma starting its performance with something of a topside pass. And now get ready to see some flares. And don't they look good at sunset? And this is the first time, by the way, that the Swiss Air Force's Super Puma solo display has performed at sunset, so yet another first. The AS332M1 Super Puma is an advanced, enlarged version of the Aerospatiale Puma, which first flew in 1965. The Super Puma followed in 1978 and is still in production today. Switzerland operates some 24 of them and it's one of more than 30 current and former military operators.
climbing away now and rotating as it does so using the power of its two turbo mecha macula turbo shaft engines each producing over 1800 shaft horsepower of course it's empty today but it can carry up to 18 passengers or 3000 kilograms of payload and yet remains surprisingly sprightly what an amazing sky at this point it's perhaps 10 minutes after sunset Now the helicopter's reversing for a tight backwards 360 degree turn. and continuing to reverse straight away from us, climbing as it does so, but don't take your eyes off that helicopter because it's about to fire another salvo of flares. And if you like that, then just wait to see the flare dump that ends the show. But there's one more manoeuvre before that, a very dramatic wing over that looks almost like a loop. We go back to the gliders next as Guy Westgate in the S1 Swift gives us a little taste of the world record he set on the Tuesday before the show. You can see him rolling around on tow for just a few seconds here, but on the Tuesday he rolled continuously for well over 20 minutes, completing 200 consecutive aileron rolls while on aero tow. And as if that wasn't enough, immediately afterwards he went straight into a full aerobatic display and we're going to see a little bit of that now as well. The Swift is one of the most aerobatic gliders ever built and we're getting just a flavour of that capability here. We're not going to see it to its full potential. Guy performs a fuller repertoire of manoeuvres during the day, but he does tone it down a tad for his sunset show to give us something a little bit more graceful with those pyrotechnics. There was a tail slide in there though. That was the manoeuvre a short time ago where Guy stopped in midair and then fell backwards. And it was the first time that Guy had performed the tail slide with fireworks on the wing. So yet again, another first. You can see it really is getting very dark as Guy comes into land. We'll be seeing more from him later on, but now we go back to the Polish Air Force for their last contribution of the evening and for yet another Lezno first. And in fact, this time it's a world first because it's not just the first time a C-130 has participated in this event. It's the first time anywhere that the Polish Air Force has fielded a full C-130 Hercules display.
This is one of five C-130Es that the Polish Air Force has in its inventory, soon to be replaced by five C-130Hs. In both cases, they are second-hand aircraft from the United States. We saw that lovely topside pass to open the show, but now onto the second of its four manoeuvres, which is a tactical approach demonstration. And now a simulated cargo drop with the rear ramp open. And if this were being done in anger, the aircraft could be carrying up to six pallets, 1,900 kilograms of payload, or 64 airborne troops. While that's all well and good, it's the fourth and final pass that was not just the highlight of the display, but also probably of my entire air show season. That is a display I very much hope we'll be seeing more of out on the airshow circuit in the years to come, but from that world debut, we return to another Lejno regular in the form of Marek Choim in the extra 330SC. Marek performed in the day show as well as the night show. I've decided not to include that here, not because it isn't good, it is in fact excellent, uh, but because we did feature it at length in last year's coverage of Antidotum Airshow Lejno, which is, I believe, Airshow Dispatches Series 3, Episode 3, so please do take a look at that. Lejno is famous for its showmanship and innovation, and Marek's display is one of those which received the full Lejno treatment with something a little special at the end. It's called the Pyro Pylon Run. Marek is going to slalom Red Bull Air Race style around columns of Roman candles launched from the ground. And there's a certain irony to this because the Pyro Pylon Run was invented by the British aerobatic pilot Mark Jeffries. And today, Marek Choem is displaying the very aircraft that was owned by Mark Jeffries at the point that he invented the pyro pylon run. Another act from last year now, which I'm afraid we are going to skip through somewhat, and this is the Flying Dragons, a hugely imaginative team of paramotors that displays with lights and pyrotechnics, all synchronised to music. There is nothing else quite like them in the world, and they are brilliant. But in Series 3, Episode 3, we had quite a lengthy feature on them. We played part of their display, filmed both from the air and from the ground, all accompanied by their original soundtrack. We just can't top that this year, so please do give that a watch if you haven't already. More Lejno aerial artistry coming up courtesy of the Aerosparks display team and the promised return of Guy Westgate flying here with Rob Barsby. It's a team we've seen many times before on this programme, but stick around because you'll never have seen them quite like this before. 
Not only do we have some wonderful onboard camera views, but we're also going to see some utterly spectacular integration with ground-launched pyrotechnics as the finale to the show, as the team fly tight orbits around a mad kind of firework-spewing Catherine wheel on a cherry picker. It's not something I'd ever seen the likes of before, and in person at least, it was one of the most jaw-droppingly extraordinary sights I have ever witnessed at an air show. And that is one of the things that makes Lejno so special. I have used so many superlatives over the course of this episode, and it was the same during our last visit, but it is all genuine. A wonderful selection of acts, staging imaginative, inventive, one-off performances in stunning conditions at an intimate venue with a friendly atmosphere. Antidotum Airshow Lejno really is second to none. And so, get ready to see something quite extraordinary as the finale to the air show, and as the finale to this episode. What a way to bring the episode to a close. Next time, we return to IWM Duxford for one of their midsummer flying days. I hope you'll join me then, but until that time, thank you very much for your company. From me, Adam Landau, it's goodbye for now. <laughs>